Consider, for instance, Janet Jackson's boobs, or her one boob, for that one half second from 200 yards away at the Super Bowl game. She flashed her breasts, resulting in a huge fine by Colin Powell's son. Irate indignation soared across our airwaves and newspapers. What would the children think if they saw a nipple? Should children see nipples? <laughs> Ever? <laughs> Yet that same season, children by the droves were driven to see Mel Gibson's The Passion of the Christ where two hours of up-close torture was used to teach them that this happened for them, to fix their sins. Consider on TV how a breast or a butt is blurred out while a gun or a knife is highlighted as entertainment. Swear words are bleached out and hateful words are allowed. Hundreds of references to murder every week on our televisions and radios televisions especially, but hardly ever a week where we ever see any nudity or any decent sex. <laughs> Consider the history of the nude in art. Depictions of the Garden of Eden always have that convenient leaf or, or that shag of hair covering up the most interesting parts of Eve or Adam. Whatever is most alluring is most forbidden. But old Christian art often showed the nipples of Mary and the penis of Jesus to highlight their innocent, God-given humanity. Then it changed. And in the medieval ages, no nakedness was to be seen in church except for those sadistic paintings of hell where nudity is tortured. There, sex justifies violence. Recently, I was in Washington, D.C. a few years ago. They were touching up the sumptuous artwork in the Library of Congress. And the, women, the, the women's nipples in this artwork was being simply painted out. No nipple there. And then down the street, our chief law uh, officer, John Ascroft, paid some $18,000 to hide a bronze statue of Lady Justice because of her embarrassing breasts. While justice was hidden, habeas corpus began to be denied, and torture began to be rationalized and implemented. Consider that anguished girl child in Vietnam running away in terror from the horror of war. You remember that photograph, don't you? You could see her innocent and vulnerable vagina. Should that be allowed? You could see it and the pleading in her face. What you couldn't see was the blasted and napalmed bodies of her family and friends back in the village in the shadows. You couldn't see that Colin Powell was an information officer then, keeping all the My Lies and the Tiger Delta Force stories out of our news and attention. Consider, finally, the various models of governance and sexuality around the world. In some lands, moralistic theocrats rule severely and sternly, punishing any sexual behavior with whipping, stoning, and even public executions as entertainment in sports coliseums. In other places, a humanistic exploration of tolerance and live and let live prevails. In Amsterdam, you cannot walk your dog in the park because it might drop poop there. But if you want to make love in the park and have people watch you, you can. It's a new city law. In some places, men own and boss their women, calling any woman who dares to walk alone at night, call her a whore and say she's suitable for being raped. In other places, women are allowed to pick the lovers beyond their husbands. And the men in the community support this because they love the women and they know it benefits their community. So as a generalization, I think it is valid to correlate a repressive stance towards our body and sexuality with violence, 
while those societies who are tolerant and celebratory of our bodies and sexuality are far less violent. And had I the time, I would be glad to compare chimpanzees and bonobos on that very account, because we're evolved from something close to them both. And it matters very much as to what sorts of inclinations and stuff is in our genes.